Are you struggling to find easy keto, low carb comfort foods for camping? In this video, I show you my simple recipe for keto mac and cheese, coming up. Hey, I'm Drew and this is Evergreen Overland. On this channel, we do reviews on camping and overland gear. We showcase four x four vehicle modifications and we hone our outdoor cooking recipes and techniques like the one we're gonna talk about in today's video. My wife and I primarily try to eat low carb, be it keto, paleo, whole 30, etc. We're not always 100% because hey, you gotta live sometimes, but we do try to maintain some semblance of our regular diet when we're out camping and exploring. Today, we're gonna make one of our favorite camp recipes, either to use as a side dish or even a main course with our keto cauliflower mac and cheese. Today, I'm gonna be cooking out on the back patio, so let's go ahead and set up the exo table and get going. All right, well, there you got it. I'm all set up to cook on the back deck. As funny as this looks, it's not all that out of the ordinary for me to set up some of my camp stuff at home and practice cooking just general everyday meals on it so that I'm super experienced with all the equipment when I'm out exploring. Nowadays, pretty much everything can be made from cauliflower. I swear to God, there's a recipe for everything from cauliflower crackers to cauliflower pizza crust and a whole bunch of stuff in between. I've made the recipe today using a couple different types of cauliflower and it just kind of depends what what the finished end result you're looking for or the level of convenience you wanna have in what type of cauliflower to choose. Now, if you're looking for something that's going to be a little bit more hearty and uh, substantial, you can definitely go with just a regular cauliflower head. This is about a half a head of cauliflower. And I just cut these up into about an inch to a half inch bite-sized pieces. I do a ton of prep cooking and meal prepping at home just in general. And especially before a big trip, I really plan out most of our meals. And I do a lot of the messy prep at home where you can kind of control all the variables and package things up to be easier to use on the trail. Now, the second type of cauliflower that I'll use in this recipe is like a frozen pre-riced cauliflower. This stuff comes from Costco. There's four one pound bags in there. Um, you can use it frozen and cook it, or you can use it refrigerated either way. Obviously, you're gonna get more of a small consistency with the rice cauliflower and a little bit different texture, but you don't really notice it too much in the meal. Last, and what we're actually gonna be using to make our meal today, is this stuff right here. This is also a product that I get from Amazon. It's a shelf stable riced cauliflower. I'll link to it if I can find it. Otherwise, it's just on the shelf at Costco. It's already pre-cooked and ready to go and it's shelf stable in this bag for a pretty long time. So this is something that I actually keep in my dry camping pantry like 24 seven, because it's really easy to take this and do a Spanish rice or a rice pilaf, or like in today's case, a cauliflower mac and cheese, where it doesn't take up that additional space in your fridge or cooler. Right here, these are three other items that I use for this recipe that are kind of unique. So the reason I use these is the same reason I use the shelf stable riced cauliflower. I have a cheddar cheese powder, a butter powder, and a heavy cream powder, all from a company called Hoosier Hill Farms. I've used their product for quite a few years. It's really, really quality stuff. You can buy it on Amazon or you can buy it directly from them. I'll link in the description section below all the stuff I can from the recipe that you can go purchase on Amazon. It would really help the channel out. Just last week, I put a video out on the Stanley Adventure Base Camp Cook Set. If you wanna check it out, that video will be linked right here in the description or you can go over to my YouTube channel. So these powder products from Hoosier Hill Farms, uh, they do sometimes get a little clumpy out there. It's kind of hard to keep some of the moisture out. Um, the fresher they are, the more powdery they're going to be. I am gonna to try to throw some desk and absorbers in the top of these to see if that helps down the road. If you do pick this product up and it does end up becoming a little clumpy on you over time, just scrape the sides and mix it up. It breaks down decently. Now, before I get the cauliflower rice going and heating on the stove, I'm gonna get all of my ingredients, the powders mixed together with a little bit of cold water to get them kind of combining and smoothing out. Cooking is not a science, so don't let my recipe hold you back. If you've got, if you've got extra cheese or you brought butter with you or whatever, use what you have. But this recipe that I do starts with three to four tablespoons of the cheddar cheese powder, depending on how cheesy you like it. Two tablespoons of the butter powder and two tablespoons of the heavy cream powder. And I get that all mixing together with about four tablespoons of water. Uh, you can kind of add more as needed, just eyeballing it. I keep this little whisk with me and I get this mixed together decently let it start breaking down. I kind of mix this to get it all kind of broken down and smoothed out as much as possible. Good to go there. 
So the key to making any good cauliflower rice in my eyes is to really, really dry it out as much as you can. Fresh cauliflower isn't all that wet, but the frozen rice cauliflower and then this earthly choice rice cauliflower is pretty wet. So you wanna cook it and dry it out, mixing it pretty frequently until it gets, you know, fairly dry. Now I am just gonna put a little bit of oil in the pan, use whatever oil makes sense for you. I typically use avocado. Now the nice thing about these Cook Partner steel stoves is you can really fine tune that flame to be exactly where you want it. I'm gonna get some of the moisture cooked out of this and we'll be back to the next steps. All right, there you have it. That's pretty much what you want. It's really hard to burn this because it is so uh, water filled, but um, you, you know, you go and I usually go until I just start seeing the rice brown, at least when I'm using this product. So it's nice and dry. Now my mixtures of the different powders have been combining over here, but they're still pretty clumpy. If I mix this into here now, you're not gonna really be able to break down some of those clumps. I'm gonna try to uh, break some of these down with a little bit of heat. Um, rather than dirtying a second dish, because I just don't like doing dishes when I'm out on the trail, trying to limit that as much as possible, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in one of my serving bowls. Try not to spill it. And then just to help keep some of the heat retention in this while I cook down my sauce, I'm gonna throw it into this koozie I made for my Stanley Base Camp cook kit and set it aside just to maintain some of that heat, hopefully help it not lose as much of the heat. Go ahead and empty all my sauce into my pan, get it going and see if I can break up those clumps a little bit. Actually, that took like no time at all with a little bit of heat on there. These uh, clumps are breaking up nicely. All right, I think that's pretty damn good there. I'm gonna go ahead and mix the cauliflower rice back into it. That really only took like a minute. Let me get this mix back in and start reducing it a little bit to thicken it. Got that all mixed. Now it's pretty soupy right now. So, you know, I'm just gonna keep mixing it around, keeping it moving on the bottom of the pan until it thickens up that a water starts evaporating and it gets as thick as I want it to be. You can just see it start to combine. The soupiness is going away of it. Yeah, that's looking really, really good. All right, so honestly, that's gonna be perfect as a side dish for any camp meal. If you wanna take this to the next step and make it more of like a main course item, you could do so by adding any variety of additional things, you know, sauteing up some bacon and some onions, adding a hamburger or doing a chili to make it chili mac, cut up hot dog, let's do it. There's no shortage of ingredients you could add to this to really just step it up and make it a little bit more unique to whatever you want it to be. I'm gonna go a little bit extra, give this a little bit of a topping, pork rinds, a little bit of cheddar cheese, this little number that I've added to my camp cooking, a little butane torch people use for doing creme brulee. Mmm, bubbly. All right, well, that's what I'm having for dinner tonight. This is seriously one of my favorite things to eat while out camping. It's super simple, easy side for any meal or just eat it as a full meal by itself. Never claimed to not be a messy cook. I've got quite the mess to clean up behind me, but uh, hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button to let me know I've done a good job. If you wanna see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and click that bell icon to be notified when I put out a new video. I'm putting out a new video at least once a week right now. If you have any questions about this video or the recipe that we just made, please throw them down in the comment section below. I love interacting with you guys and kind of building this community out. There will also be links to any of the products I use in this video in the description section below. If you wanna follow me 
over on other platforms, please definitely check me out over on Instagram at evergreenoverland or over on evergreenoverland.com. Thanks for watching.